My name is David Topete. I have a Master's of Science degree in Civil Engineering. I am a licensed structural engineer. I design new structures and retrofit existing structures uh, from concrete or masonry or structural steel. And currently I am doing the structural design for an 11 story mid-rise office building here in San Francisco. Once Tower 7 collapsed, hours after the fact, after the initial events happened, it just seemed very suspicious. It just spontaneously collapsed. It happened so quickly. There's eyewitness accounts of hearing explosions and just seeing the video of how it, how it came down. It, it just seemed very suspicious. And I came across the website of Architects Engineers for 9-11 Truth, and I reviewed the information that was presented on there. Um, I, I looked at there was... Apparently, blueprints, for example, the construction drawings from uh, from Towers 1 and 2 that were available, you know, the structural drawings, and um, there was just a lot of information relative to, to the incidents and to the collapses relative to Towers 1 and 2. Um, I noticed that there was a petition that you can, you can sign on, and I reviewed a lot of the names that were on there. Um, a lot of people from um, academia, a lot of professors, a lot of architects, um, a lot of structural engineers, chemical engineers, physicists. Um, so there was quite a bit in in my in my perspective, quite a bit of uh, people that were technically, I would say, more technically competent of of reviewing the information that was available and kind of saying, hey, this doesn't quite seem right. Um, once the official report came out, I, 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 I'm still, I still have some doubts as to, as to uh, the, uh, the credibility, the, uh, the official answers that were given. World Trade Center 7 was 47 stories. From what I recall, it collapsed later in the afternoon. And again, there was no plane. In reviewing the video of um, from different angles of how the building collapsed, just the the the, the, the physical the physical nature of it, the how it actually collapsed, how it kind of imploded upon itself or fell upon itself. It didn't topple over and hit another of the uh, adjacent buildings. It kind of just seemed to fall straight down on its own, and you know, again, in reviewing the um, uh, some of the eyewitness uh, accounts, people hearing what sounded like explosions and 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 things like that, again, it just it it didn't seem very um, didn't seem plausible for any other type of of uh, cause for such an event. Again, as a structural engineer, I'm trying to comprehend. How um, if there's a handful of, of bolts that that are loosened or, or fatigued, you may have in, in a beam to column intersection, for example, you may have a failure of a girder or a beam that falls down. But again, I, I just don't. It's hard for me to get to fathom that a fire can cause could cause such such a type of catastrophic failure. Just seeing the evidence, again, yeah, that would be a localized type of damage, I want to say, would be in one little area for it to propagate and cause such a failure for, to cause a collapse to come down in the manner that it, that it did. Essentially, in less than seven seconds, uh, Tower 7 came down upon itself, and for it to cause such a chain reaction, you know, if it started at the ground level, well, whether it was explosives or some type of demolition control charges, uh, obviously that's the evidence that I've seen appears to indicate something, something like that. As opposed to this official report that says there were localized failures on the twelfth floor and on column seventy-nine, based on my education, based on my training, my everyday experience as a structural engineer. It's difficult for me to comprehend that something on the twelfth level, and column seventy nine is closer to an exterior corner and not in the center. Uh, if if 
there were such a failure, I uh, I would I would tend to think that the collapse of the structure would be in a different manner. Uh, in my professional opinion, if if column seventy nine, if again if we're looking at the the tra- tower seven in plan, it's essentially a trapezoid. So one side was longer than than the opposite side parallel. And yeah, two it's two wedges, right? If you have a four legged table, you take out one leg on one corner. It's just going to be very difficult for the rest of the other three legs to make that table stand up. In essence, that's how I am envisioning what would happen to a 47-story structure when you have one element that's nearest a corner. If that fails, it's going to redistribute the loads. And once that happens, the whole thing will topple over, basically over that weakened area. And that's, 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 that's what I'm envisioning what should have happened. Column 79 failed at the 12th floor, which, again, I, I certainly believe that, in my professional opinion, the building would want to topple over. It would want to bend over all over that, that weakened area and topple over sideways. What we saw was we saw the structures came straight down upon itself. And for a building to come straight down, again, in my professional opinion, I certainly believe that if you have a box that's in plan, for it to come down straight down upon itself, you would need to basically take out the supports at the center, at the core. You take out those those supports at, at the center, eventually, when you look at the structural system, the floor is supported by the beam, supported by the girder, supported by the columns. You take out a column, that chain comes, comes backwards to the floor, uh, it works back up to the chain, and again, if you work at, at, the, at the core of the building, at the center of the building, you take out the, the center supports, everything's going to want to come down upon itself. In my professional opinion, in my experience, for World Trade Center 7 to collapse straight down upon itself, as the video indicates, as everything that we've witnessed, the, the supports at the center essentially all had to be taken out at once. And I certainly believe that it had to have been controlled demolition, controlled charges, explosives, something of that type, because it was a sudden failure. The columns towards the base are going to be incredibly heavy. They're going to be made of two-inch thick steel. As an example, column 79 was a structural steel section that had a weight of 1,100 pounds per lineal foot. So an 1,100 pounds... Just to to put that in perspective, the density of steel is of structural steel is 490 pounds per cubic foot. So we're talking 1,100 pounds per lineal foot. So we had approximately two and a half cubic feet of steel per foot. So we're talking about. Um, I'm just I'm just gonna guess. We're talking about the flange having a thickness of approximately three inches, the web having a thickness of approximately two inches. So in in reviewing the evidence, in reviewing the footage of what's happened with Tower Seven, what doesn't make sense is the NIST report of Tower Seven. In my opinion, it, it is it's very difficult to comprehend that that the NIST report would would bypass it and would omit and would strike out some other evidence that that has been found. We need to have a new investigation uh, into the failures of Towers 1, 2, and 7. And I think we need to have an investigation of NIST themselves. I believe that the reports that came out are not true. I believe there's a lot of, again, a lot of information that was omitted uh, blatantly or, or otherwise. <laughs>